guys, welcome back to a new video. Today is a special cooking video for you. Right before the holidays, I actually shared a recipe around Korean temple food and today I wanted to do the same thing. I have been thinking a lot about my own food journey and kind of the way I prepare foods, the cuisines I try out. And I bumped into this Korean temple food book from Monk Wokwan. So Korean temple food is based on the philosophy of Buddhism in combination with traditional Korean cuisine. I really was inspired by this process where mindfulness was not only brought into eating food, but also into the preparations of food. And this is something when I was in Italy, I noticed that as well, the chefs, what kind of appreciation they had for each type of ingredients. Korean temple food is a vegetarian based diet. Um, sometimes, occasionally, they use some dairy, some milk products. And also very important, there are five ingredients, the five pungent foods, which you can't use. Those are green onions, onions, leek, chives, and garlic. Um, the monks believe that it brings anger to the minds and doesn't calm you down. So yeah, today we're going to share a recipe for Korean pancakes, which I actually found in the book. And I have all my ingredients ready here. So let me show you all the ingredients you need. Two red chili peppers and about eight green chili peppers. 100 grams of tofu, nice source of protein, half a cup of all-purpose flour, a couple tablespoons of vegetable stock, one and a half tablespoon of soybean paste, Korean chili paste, and some grapeseed oil. Okay, we're gonna start cutting up our vegetables. So the best way to go along with these peppers, if you roll them upside down, a couple times, it's actually gonna be easier to remove all the seeds in here. So cut them in half. Move them over. Just removing the inside one by one. So the monks actually grow most of the vegetables themselves or they find their ingredients in nature. And this is actually very similar to the farm to table process we know nowadays. And this is also something that I remember from growing up um, in Holland on like a farm that we always use like fresh ingredients from the garden. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with the green chili peppers. Just going to roll them upside down a couple times. And it's actually recently that I found cooking very like mindful. Before I think it had to, I wasn't as experienced and I was like watching TV at the same time. Um, but recently I just put a podcast on, I organize all the ingredients and this way the process of making uh, dishes is actually much easier. Okay, so we're going to cut this in half and remove again all the seeds inside. I'm going to cut these in very thin little slices and this will be part of the base of the pancakes. Try to slice them as like thin as possible. Because we're not using a lot of spices in here, um, but just the chilies, we actually really get the nice flavors of the chili peppers on itself. Grab a big bowl and in here we're going to almost mix the dough for the pancakes. So we're adding our chili peppers into here. Then I'm going to add half a cup of flour, all-purpose flour. I have 100 grams of tofu. I actually drained this a little bit with a kitchen towel. And I'm just going to use my hands and crumble this. It is okay if there's a little bit of liquid in here. This will hold all the cream pancakes well together. Then we're going to add the soybean paste. 
actually found this um, just online, if you found it at home, and some of the chili paste. <laughs> Never enough chilies. <laughs> this is definitely gonna be a spicy, a spicy pancake. We're adding this and about a tablespoon of vegetable stock. I'm going to start with one, um, kind of depending on how well it blends, I will adjust more. And this is something what is also very important in like the principles of cooking for the Buddhism. The number one is actually clarity in the way you prepare it, the way you treat your ingredients and kind of how it really affects your body, kind of how it keeps your body very clear, but also your mind. And the second one is actually flexibility, which means the timing of the ingredients, the preparations, it really depends each time on what your ingredients are, what season it is, for who you're cooking. So that's why we're starting first with one tablespoon of vegetable stock, and then we go from there. After you do this with a spoon, it's just easiest to use your hands Kind of make this big ball of dough and based on this you might want to add a little bit more flour or a little bit more vegetable stock kind of want it to stick together all right i'm going to add a little bit of extra flour and mix it again okay i have a big bowl here with the dough it's not too wet, it's not too dry, it kind of like sticks together well. So I'm going to make smaller little bowls and this is going to be the base for each little pancake. Just grab about a tablespoon and just roll it together. And you can make it nice and flat. And the pancake shape can be a couple inches, baby pancakes. There we go. All right, our little pancakes are ready. And now it's basically just cooking them up on the stove. So let's go. Just use a big iron pan on a medium heat. I'm going to add some grapeseed oil. You can also use like an olive oil, something neutral, which doesn't take too much away from the pancake flavor. I'm gonna heat this up. Always make sure when you're grilling or cooking something, let the oil first heat up before you're adding it immediately to the pan. Otherwise the food becomes very greasy and obviously not very tasty and the middle doesn't cook very like even. So we're just gonna wait until this is hot. Okay, so one by one, I'm going to add them to the pan. You can hear the little sizzle, so the oil is hot. They are so cute. Perfect. There is something about everything in mini, which is just really, really cute. I'm going to add a lid on this um, because my pancakes are a little bit thick, so this way I make sure the inside gets cooked as well. And then we just wait. <laughs> okay, we're gonna check. There we go. They're beautiful golden brown. I'm gonna flip these. And I'm going to cook them on this side for a couple of minutes. All right, I think our little pancakes are ready. It smells amazing here. I'm going to add them to a plate. There we go. Look at these. They are super cute, but they also contain a lot of vitamin C of the chili peppers, and this can actually help for nerve and joint pain. So besides that they look very cute, they are delicious, they're also super nutritious. You can really serve this with a bowl of rice or a rice ball. I am actually going to make one of my favorite salads and it's kind of a new recipe, I haven't shared it with you yet. And it's a crispy brown rice salad. It is still very aligned with Korean temple food and kind of clean ingredients. So I'm excited to kind of pair this up and eat this for lunch together.
So let's get started. For our second dish, we're going to be making a crispy brown rice kale salad. All you need is a bowl of curly kale. If you don't have this at home, you can use mixed greens as well. One cup of cauliflower rice, one bowl dried brown rice, you can make this by cooking brown rice like you normally do, and after leave it on a plate for 6 hours to dry out. Two small Persian cucumbers, pomegranate seeds, raisins, fresh mint and thyme, half an avocado, chili flake peppers, red wine vinegar, olive oil, and grapeseed oil. Now turn the stove on medium heat, add two cups of red wine vinegar, add raisins and the fresh thyme. I normally add a pinch of coconut sugar to give the raisins extra sweetness, which is really delicious in a salad. Let this simmer for a couple of minutes so the raisins absorb the liquid and become nice and plump. Place another saucepan on the stove on high heat and add two inch of grapeseed oil to fry the brown rice. While this is warming up, cut the Persian cucumbers in a quarter and thin slices. Cut up some fresh mint. A little trick is to put the leaves on top of each other and roll it up and then cut it. To make the dressing for the salad, add a quarter cup of olive oil to a cup and add salt and pepper to taste. Add two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. I like to use the one from the raisins because it has more flavor, but if it's already too hot, you can just use red wine vinegar out of your bottle. Then we're going to head back to the stove now the oil is hot. We're adding the brown rice to the oil and frying it for a couple of seconds to make it crispy and crunchy. Use chopsticks or a spoon to break apart the pieces in the oil. Once they're golden brown, remove them from the pan and place on a plate with a kitchen towel to absorb the remaining oil. Our raisins are simmering, so grab the strainer and strain them and let them cool down. Grab a big bowl, add the curly kale and make sure to remove the stems. Add the dressing and massage the kale until it's soft. This will make it easier for your stomach to digest instead of eating raw kale. Add cucumbers cauliflower rice, raisins, pomegranate, fresh herbs, crumble the crispy brown rice and add red pepper flakes and mix everything together. Cut an avocado and use a spoon to scoop. Mix everything together and our salad for today is ready. So colorful, so nutritious and delicious. My lunch is ready. So I have a really big bowl of salad. It's like avocado in there, some crispy brown rice. So I love the different kind of textures of, you know, the crispiness. I always think when you're making a salad, this is nice to add on. So I'm just gonna plate my lunch for today. There we go. And then on the side, I'm going to add some little pancakes and here we go i love this combination of one of my favorite salads with uh, a korean temple food recipe and now we're going to do a little taste test mm. it's so so good it is so flavorful in such a small little bite. It's definitely spicy. <laughs> so if you can't handle spice, you can like adjust it a little bit, but I just love savory. And this in here, the texture is also incredible. Really, really good. The combination also with like the freshness of the salad, I think is really, really nice. I will actually link the recipe of this dish down below. If you wanna know more about Korean temple food, I will link the cookbook down below, um, which is full of easy, healthy recipes. And you can also check out uh, Discover Korea Life. I will put that down below as well. And yeah, I'm going to enjoy my lunch. I will see you guys in my next video. And also don't forget to leave a comment down below if you have any questions for me.
Bye.